suffering a concussion in last week's game versus the Seahawks. Steelers quarterback Big Ben Roethlisberger was cleared to play. He was 24 of 39, 364 yards and four touchdowns. That's a lot. He was not sacked, and he's been doing that for the past week since, like, I think uh, they ha- – there are some like Steeler records or even maybe uh, NFL records about having, I think, over 400 total yards or something like right. that. Right. Uh, going into this game, I know this team led in receptions over 40 yards. I can't help but think that they extended that lead. They, I, they, they certainly have more than 20. I'll put it that way. And Ben has at least, off the top of my head, three games I can think of with four touchdowns, and it's probably more. Weasel. So, Steelers running back D'Angelo Williams lost a fumble, but he had 26 carries for 134 yards with five catches for 31 yards. One of the uh, best wide receivers in the NFL, eh? What can you say about Antonio Brown? Eight for 118 with two touchdowns. And how about if we had a uh, final score of the day for the Steelers? Uh, returning a punt, 71 yards for a touchdown. But Weasel, why was Antonio Brown returning punts? Because Jacoby Jones fumbled two of them. Yes. Former 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 Steeler killer and Baltimore Raven, the Duck Hunter, that helped Joe the Foul Flacco win a touchdown, a touch, win a touchdown, win a Super Bowl in 2012, was do, Mike Tomlin was doing the you can't beat him, join him defense, and Jacoby Jones fumbled him twice. I'm kind of shocked they didn't put him on a plane right there to send him home. I yeah. mean, yeah, they were in Pittsburgh, but. I, Maybe that's why they didn't put them on a plane. They were already at home. I don't know. Uh, anyways, I thought that was ridiculous. And Antonio Brown's like, you know what? I got this too. Yeah. yeah, you, The guy's amazing. And, I, uh, I just had to say it, Weasel. I'm sorry. Word. And so uh, they have this these two other guys there. Martavis Bryant had four for 114 yards and and a touchdown. And oh, you man. have uh, Marcus Wheaton, three for 50 and a touchdown. You didn't break 200? Cut him. Yeah. <laughs> Colts uh, quarterback Matt Hasselbeck was in for the injured Andrew Luck. 16 of 26, 169 yards, one touchdown, two INTs, sacked twice, lost a fumble. And the Colts, they did jump to a 10-6 lead midway through the second quarter after veteran running back Frank Gore caught a nine-yard touchdown pass. Overall, he had three catches for 49 yards. In addition, 13 carries, 145 yards, and a touchdown. Did you just say Frank Gore had 49 yards? Yes. See, see, see what I did there? Because he used to play for the four. Shut up! That's funny. Okay, I get it now. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, hater. <laughs> and uh, the Steelers' defense, you could say they stepped up, and not allowing another score for the rest of the game. And and, and uh, let me add to that: zero sacks by the Colts' defense, five by the Steelers. They lead the league in team sacks, but they don't have anybody outstanding in the individual sack count like in the top five or anything like that mm-hmm. um hashtag team defense and look i know that dick lebeau not there anymore but the spirit never dies or at least it hasn't yet in pittsburgh with that defense i know it was a 40 year old starting quarterback but yeah still anyways tomlin is a defensive minded coach too so well hey there you go um leave it at that <clears throat> with the next game up the colts Lost ground in the AFC South. Currently have, or they have the lead there going into this game, giving the Houston Texans a chance to get a leg up and take the lead in the division. And it just didn't happen. Bills win 30-21 to hosting the Houston Texans. Brian Hoyer did not have a bad game. I got to say, this one is not on him. 26 for 43, 293 yards with three touchdowns, one interception. But Tyrod Taylor, guys, I got to tell you, if you go 11 for 21 for 211 yards and still manage Four touchdowns on the day. You're doing something extremely weird and extremely right. (laughs) Hashtag big plays. Speaking of big plays, Shady McCoy of the Bills, 21 carries for 112 yards. Hashtag balanced offense. 11 for 21, 21 carries by your top uh, running back. Dude, I'm just saying. And for my money, that's the main reason you have big plays is if you have a balanced offense like this, if you're somebody who's like, let's say, I don't know, a Brian Cushing, a linebacker for said Houston Texans, I'm creeping up. I'm creeping. Oh, I'm gonna, oh crap, play action, touchdown. Damn it. <laughs> CS3, Sissel Shorts, a third leading receiver for the Texans, 6 for 91. DeAndre Hopkins contributed a touchdown, as did tight end Ryan Griffin. Sammy Watkins, stop receiver for the Bills. 
He wanted the ball more. He got the ball more. Three catches for 109 yards. I think that might be some of your big plays. Just saying. Uh, Watkins had a touchdown, as did Charles Clay and Robert Woods. Um, bottom line is, gentlemen, if the Texans want to try to win this division as garbage as it is, they got to step the game up, and they did not in this game. Meaning the door is open for the Jags to try to move things along for a miracle comeback and have their shot to try to claim the AFC South. Chris, Jags, Titans, how'd that go for them? Well, the Jags blew the game, and the Titans did not allow a third comeback by the Jags to a Titans 42-39 to shutout victory. So how did the Jags blow the game? That's a good question. So let's just get this over with right now. Kyle, cue the music. Uh-oh, not again. <laughs> How did it happen, Chris? All right. Jason Myers, league-leading point-after-attempt miss, misses, missed the first kick of the day in the second quarter to bring his total to five on the year. Wow. So if he misses three more, check this out. Oh, my God, this is mind-blowing. If he misses three more, one kicker, one kicker would have missed just as many as the entire NFL last year. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's my mind being blown. Right, well, well, keep keep that music going because, I mean, after, you know, so when the Jags scored their second touchdown, they had attempt to go to two for two, and they failed that. But later in the fourth quarter, he missed another point after attempt to bring his total to six. Wait, so this guy's at six? He's at six now. He missed two extra points in this game. So if he misses two more by himself... He would have missed as many as the entire NFL kicking community last year combined. Weasel. I, I'd say that. Let's see. The uh, two point, the extra points last year were uh, from the two yard line, so it ended up being what like about a uh, twenty one yard, twenty one yard field goal. Twenty one yard field goal. What I I understand why they went, they picked it up off at the, uh, they moved it to the fifteen yard line, but I was thinking, why not ten? <laughs> Stop being a punk. Because. 33-yard field goal is, you know, quote-unquote, should be a gimme. Uh, Robbie Gold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. Hashtag 49ers won a game. That means you suck. <laughs> but it's the kind of thing that I think if he had – if they moved it to, like, the 10, you would have, like, what is it, 27-yard field goal or something along those lines, which I think is the happy medium, you could say, between kicking a field goal and kicking an extra point. I don't agree. Well, well, well look, here, here's what here's what the NFL wanted to do, why they moved it back there, because they wanted more misses, and they got it. Oh, yeah, they definitely they, got they it. They didn't want it automatic anymore. I mean, they're still, they're still um, kicking more than 95% of the um, extra points. So it's almost giving them most teams, you know, there's still, what, 10 teams I think I had last week that still have not missed an extra point. Wow, yeah. Yeah, you had 20. And, and, what's, and what's what's funny is the Jets are on their Jets have gone through three kickers, and their kicker they have now is Bullock, who started the season with the Texans, who missed three extra points at the beginning of the Texans, and he got cut. Guess they should have stuck with him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so really, I mean, if you look at the score, 42 to 39 in this game, there's two extra points missed, then they had to go for two on another one. So that's another point. There's three right there. It would have been a tied game. So, oh, Gus sorry, Bradley, sorry. when are you going to cut this kicker? If, if you're looking for a previous arena football kicker, then just go up here to the Orlando Predators kicker, Mark Lewis. I mean, I could vouch for him, and he will not miss an extra point. Uh, you know, I mean, at this point, I, I don't know how Jason Myers had a job after he blew the opportunity to beat the Colts the first time they played each other. Um, sorry. Yeah, so I don't know. Weasel. Uh, I'm pretty sure for Arena League, isn't the actual, like, I guess you can call it like a field goal or the, the uprights. uprights, aren't they a lot more narrow? Narrow, yes. Yes, they are. So. Absolutely. Now, granted, you're not kicking 50 or 60 yard kicks, but that's not the purpose and issue here. If you kick the length of the arena football field, that's longer than an actual PAT now. Just saying. Now, well, you, go ahead. You, you, do, you, you do still kick 50 yard field goals in the arena because the field's 50 yards long and you still can kick it because there's no punting so if you get the ball in your five and you don't do anything you still kick like a 50 something yard field goal and they play it off the net it's basically the same thing as a punt but yeah i got you which is why they had to make the uprights narrow which I, whatever i see why you think jason myers should be cut and we'll leave it at that 
Right. Yeah. Let's let's cut him. And if he still wants an arena kicker, just come over early. You know, you don't have to really pay too much. He's really expensive. And just take up Mark Lewis. He's been looking for an NFL um, job anyway, and he's he, he won't miss that extra point like that. Inside um, but, uh, <laughs> but but also in the fourth quarter, Jag Center snapped the ball over Bortles' head. Even the new basketball player for UCF, the seven foot six Taco Fall, wouldn't be able to catch it. How high the ball was, and it was covered in the end zone by the Titans. You basically just said that that Sean Bradley could not have caught this snap. That's pretty much what just happened right there. All right. So Blake Burles had a solid day. He was twenty four for thirty six for three hundred twenty two yards. He set the Jags season record for most touchdown passes in a game with five and bringing his total to 27 on the year, which is a Jags quarterback um, record as well. Rookie running back T.J. Yeldon had 57 yards on the ground with a touchdown. Robinson had 10 for 153 and three touchdowns. Julius Thomas and Rashard Green each had a touchdown catch. Marcus Mariota was 20 for 29 for 268 yards, three touchdowns, an INT. Seven of them were on a touchdown run, which is the longest touchdown run in NFL this season. How long Running back into what was that? How long was was Mariota's run? 87, 80, yards. 87 yards. The longest touchdown run in, on the season is by a bleeping quarterback, Mariota. Yes, pre, yes pre, previous run was 86 yards by um, uh, Doug Martin. So running back Antonio Andrews also had a touchdown run. Doriel Green Beckham had five catches for 119 yards and a touchdown. And tight end Delaney Walker had eight for 92 with a touchdown. And tight end Craig Stevens had a touchdown. But with the Jags sitting at four and eight, we have as four and 12. You cut out with the, with the Jags at four and eight. What happened? I said Weasel's projection is still holding true as he had them at 4 and 12 and during his preseason picks. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I picked four games too. No, you picked you pick five. Oh, I'm creeping. You picked five, I picked six. So we, we still could make it right. But right now, Weasel's been sitting there the last three weeks with four, with four games. So at least he's doing that one right. We'll find out who they pick in the study hall. But let's talk about a team that's a little bit more competitive. Oh, wait. Eagles, Pats. This isn't going to be competitive. Here, I'll knock this out real quick. So, the Eagles travel to Foxborough, and um, they win the game 38-20. to what, what, what the? What is going on here? Because you know you know the first thing, I the first thought we all had last week in the study hall when we saw this game? Does anybody remember? It's a trap. No, it wasn't. That wasn't our thought. We all said, anybody? Okay, moving on. Um, so, apparently, Gronk matters. Yeah, we'll throw that out there. Now, granted, let's not be ridiculous. 21 points in special teams gifts. Okay, 14 in an in interception return. Fine. But 21 points in gifts to the Eagles, certainly a factor here. I mentioned Gronk because the interception in question that was taken back for the touchdown was thrown to one Danny Amendola, who was not strong enough to make this play. However, if you threw this ball to say, I don't know, one Rob Gronkowski, instant touchdown classic. Okay, maybe not instant touchdown classic, but it's certainly not an interception. Look, guys, I'm not a Patriots fan. If anything, I've been about as critical as anybody can be from from as um, objective a seat as possible. But this was kind of a fluke. If you enjoyed watching it, that's fine. But um, pop quiz: Does anybody buy into using the phrase "Brady declining" because of this game, Weasel? Ridiculous. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, I believe we've been saying the Gronk set offense anyway. So now, okay, boom. Oh, by the way, uh, Julian Edelman still out as well. Throw that out there. Even the Giants fan says that Brady isn't declining. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. I'm I'm good. I'm good. I'm just I mean, I've never had to defend the Patriots like that before. It it feels odd. Cause usually I have to be like, well look guys, he's not they're not as good as you think because this and this and this. No. Actually no, I did the defend of the Patriots last year when they lost to the Chiefs and everybody else said was Brady was declining then. And we all remember what happened. Weasel. I think it's you defend uh Rob Gronkowski. I do defend Rob Gronkowski. I don't well, defend. As, as I advocate it, for Rob Gronkowski. Weasel. As in uh, Gronkowski over 
uh, Brady for like something like MVP or Offensive Player of the Year. Oh, sure, for MVP of that team. I'm not going to go 